All righty. All right, so ready to go? Linda? Linda's first. You're up. Oh, yeah. You're up first. Who's on deck? All right. Linda, what are you sharing with us? I'm sharing a website called Rewordify. Has anybody heard of that? Yes. Was that a yes or no? Yes. 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 Having to read something that's web-based and they're bumping up against vocabulary that they just can't process and deal with, and that's negatively impacting their ability to comprehend the pages. What Rewordify lets you do is go to any site. So if I go to Time for Kids, and I go and I find an article. <coughs> I have one of two options with it. So I'm gonna, one option is that I can come to the word rewordify and I can paste in here and then ask it to rewordify the text. And then what it does is it gives you, and there's different options as to how you can have it uh, display. But for example, originally this was bagpipes. And within here, they've now translated this to something easier for kids to understand. So here's the word result, it's in yellow. Outcome was the original word. But in the settings, you have the ability to select how you want it to be displayed. You can have it displayed with the hard words gone and it's easier words and you hover and see the harder word. Or you can have it the other way around, that the hard word stays there and you hover it over and it gives you the easier word. You can also have it displaying. And if you click on here, you can see what it does. So here's Sublime. And then you can also listen to it and it gives you the easier Sublime. word. Sublime. Or you can actually have them both display, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, you also can set how many words you want translated into easier or harder and the highlighting mode and then when you are if you've pasted something in as opposed you can also paste a website and it will do the same thing for the website within it but if you actually paste the content in what you can do is it also has activities um, to help build vocabulary and if you sign in you can be saving those and doing things like that um, I contacted the person who um, you contact when you have questions. And one of my suggestions had been that it can translate this, but it can't read this part of it out loud, the easier stuff. So I mentioned it to him, and he said, oh, that's a great idea. Give me a week. Yeah. And it's like, I love people like that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just think it's a really great way for kids to be able to be more independent with vocabulary. They don't have to go out of the website and look something up or go and ask somebody for help. And now he'll have that additional auditory support. Um, so I think it's a really nice website. Anybody used it that has other ways that they've used it? I just noticed one thing that you can do is you can then get a link. Like I just put in like a Tribune article and then you can actually just get the link that right. has it built in and share that with your students too. So, so, so you would, after you've rewordified it, share the rewordified Just that link. link, and it pulls up the regular Tribune website with that built into it on that. Now, I've also done this with readability, where you get the uncluttered page, and then you go to rewordify, so that's another way to use it. And then, what you saw with this is that, i go back to the beginning, it says rewordify text, but if I had put in a URL up there, then the rewordify text changes to rewordify websites. So, I, I just think, and it's free, it's always a good thing. So that's my little gem. I'm glad you came too. So, I'm actually going low tech today, um, which will be very surprising to those of you who know and love me. Um, I uh, came across two books, probably last year at like my daughter's school district reading night uh, one of the teachers this was the, the book she picked was rosie revere engineer 
and I'll pass these around. But you can see the woman, the little girl in the red handkerchief. What does that reckon you back to? Rosie the Riveter. So Rosie Revere Engineer is the story of Rosie the Riveter's great niece <laughs> and how she is in school and in school she always comes up with these great ideas for designing things with like marshmallows and crackers and stuff like that um, and ends up being a tremendous flop and gets very sad. But then Rosie the Riveter comes in and explains to her that what she's doing is great and that you need to fail to move on and that she's being creative and innovative and that's what we value. So in today's world and how education is kind of making a shift from uh, you know, sit and get education to kids making things and the theme of the ICE conference being make the difference, um, I think this is a great book to share with students. So I bought this for all of my elementary school, li all of my librarians actually, all five buildings. Um, Kathy McDonough, who's with us today, has a makerspace at Skokie School, and I gave this to her, her to have in her room for her students. And then the partner book to this is um, Iggy Peck, Architect. And Iggy's story is that he loved architecture, but when he got to second grade, he was told there will be none of that here. None of that. Because it turns out his second grade teacher got trapped in the Sears Tower and you know had a real awful experience about that, so she didn't want to talk about that. Um, but then they go on a class field trip, and the whole class gets stranded on an island, and lo and behold, Iggy starts getting underwear and shoestrings and lunch bags, and he saves the whole class. So Iggy Peck Architect is again about creativity and innovation and valuing those kids that tend to be undervalued. So I think it's, these two books are great messages um, for today and what we're trying to get across with um, education today. So I love them, my daughter loves them, um, and I highly recommend them uh, for you. So I will pass these around, they're a good read. I was gonna read to you, but I figured yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So what I have, I'll just get signed in. Um, has anyone used Lucid Press before? Mm -hmm. If you have it, it's a great little web app. Right. And you can connect it to your Google Drive. It's free for educators. And think of it like a Microsoft publisher or even I'd go so far as to put it up against Adobe InDesign for what I do on a daily basis. I always forget something. That's another quick little thing. Two-factor authentication. <laughs> and what you can do because it's basically desktop publishing, but it's all web-based. You can do it on a Chromebook, uh, a MacBook, uh, Windows Surface, any tablet. I haven't tried it on an iPad yet. But what I use it for in my daily life is I'll make uh, instruction documents on it on how to use the AV in our classrooms. You can import pictures, you can draw on them. Pretty much any desktop publishing you might want to do. If you find it's something Google Docs won't do for you because you're trying to do something fancy with images, you can probably get away with it here. Um, yeah, they've got a great, you can even do interactive things. You can make web pages out of this. You can export as HTML, PDF, um, and it all saves and connects back to your Google Drive so it's all in one place and you can access it wherever you go. Yeah. Does it connect to Lucid Chart? Because I was on that earlier today. It's the same company. They don't actually connect to each other, but it is the same the same company. Lucid Chart is a mind mapping or chart building software. You can also do. I've seen people do infographics on it. And again, it's free for education, and it connects to your Google Drive also. Any other questions? Is is that playing around with Lucid Chart? Mm -hmm. Not Lucid Press. And I thought Lucid Chart was not free. You can Lucid Press really free? I it, mean, they keep getting us. They do. They say it's free. No, it's like, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to find it for one document. Already free, <laughs> free. but free. you may have to you may have to go to a certain spot to show that you're education, but it is free once you do that. But what about the students? I'll, I know I set it up with one student last year. We were working on a 
something for a web page. But of course, once you're already authorized, I'm not sure I can And they may have even changed it since I did it. There was definitely a way I had to identify as. I think it was on the home page, and it's under like the schools. Of, well, it's, I had to find it too, but it's down at the bottom. There's an education piece that you have to sign off. Way down there. I didn't even do that. I just went through my Chrome no. maps to do with my school. Maybe it was place my school Gmail. I did too, but I think there was some other pieces you could put in that you get more features from oh, the education okay. version. But it was yeah. like right on the home page. But it was above the little menu at the bottom. Okay, it says free accounts for students and teachers. Free accounts for students and teachers. But it's, it's not easy to find. No, it's, it's actually once you put down the sign-in page, they show you the packages. There it is. And go go down now to the last question. There, there it is. is. Education page. There it is. Education page. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's there somewhere. And then at the bottom of this, you request the free upgrade, which you're already signed in. Any other questions? Okay, cool. Hi. <laughs> around a couple of things while I present. One of them is um, my card, and the other is a contact, it's just a Google form that I'd like you to fill out as we go. Um, it basically says what level of, um, I guess, what level of assistance you'd like, whether it's coming to your school in person or doing a Google Hangout, that kind of thing. Um, so after you've submitted a response, uh, go ahead and just the next person can click submit another response and we'll just pass it around that way. Um, so I'll start the cards in the uh, Google form here. I work for a company called Plotly, and it is, oops, it is based in Canada. And um, it is free for educators and students, for educational institutions. Anybody with a Google account also already has, you just click Google Plus once you're logged in. Once you're logged into your Google Plus account, you can just click that and you're ready to go. Um, I've also created a homepage, which I'll pull up over here, which is my name. And it's mrpfeiffer.com. It's P-F-E-I-F-E-R. Oh, you can't be naked. You have to have the www. All right. So from here, I have different lesson plans, and I've also made several video tutorials for students. Um, I've got this 60-second tutorial. I'm going to just run that to show you how quickly and efficiently you can make graphs and uh, share them with your instructor. Begin by going to plot.ly slash plot. This will bring you to your workspace. If you don't already have an account, you can create one by clicking the Google Plus and putting in your email and password. Once logged in, create a new grid, which is going to be your data table, and enter your data. Then, select your X and Y axes. Change it from line plot to scatter plot. Plot your data, and title your axes. Press fit line by clicking fit data, add fit, linear. Click add results to plot annotation. 
Save and title your work. Share your work with your teacher by clicking Share, selecting Include Student Options, including your name, date, project, and class. Enter your teacher's email address and click Add Collaborator. That's everything you need to know in order to create a scatter plot with the line of best fit and share it with your teacher. All right, so in under 60 seconds, you can make a scatter plot. And let's talk about some of the advantages about why Plotly is a better alternative to, say, Google, Spreadsh um, Google Sheets or um, Excel, or even Logger Pro for that matter. Um, if you Google Plotly for educators, a few things come up. Come up. <coughs> One of them is the official Plotly for Educators team, where it kind of summarizes all of the things that um, I'll be talking about. And then somewhere about five down is my name, uh, because I made a presentation on Prezi a while back. Um, what I've been doing for the last month or two is been creating materials for teachers and students to use. And the next, over the next year, I'll be collecting these materials from teachers and um, presenting them to different uh, places across the country. Um, so looking at the stakeholders, Plotly is very easy to learn. Um, we have tutorial videos. We have principal directions. It's very intuitive. Um, it says, click here to type the title. Those of you who have worked with Excel before know that's not exactly always the easiest thing to do, especially for students. Um, there's multiple ways to turn in, including paper lists lead by sharing your graph with your teacher, who can then comment on it, um, and then th that student gets emailed, so-and-so commented on your graph, you were missing on Axie's uh, title, for example, or missing, you did X versus Y instead of Y versus X, and you can grade that way. Um, there's curve fitting and uh, linearization are not very difficult to do. Um, Plotly is and always will be free for educational institutions. And that means completely free. Um, that includes my resources, that includes me coming to your school and training certain teachers to be experts at it. Um, we do have enterprise accounts with uh, various companies that purchase licenses. They have on-site, it's like a separate half of the company. Um, so I work with, I work specifically with um, technology um, directors and uh, departments, department chairs, that kind of thing. Um, the NGSS and Common Core State Standards, I actually had these printed out before I came here today. Not many of your teachers really want to read this. I'm just gonna go throw that out there, right? Um, that's, but one of the nice things about, this is my seventh, well, year in education. I taught the last six years as a science and math teacher. I'm going to be creating lessons and tying them to these standards. So since I'm not actually in the classroom, I have a significant amount of time to build materials for teachers to use. Um, I kind of view it like a sabbatical. Um, my employers give me a pretty much unlimited free reign for creative license. And so I've gone ahead and created this just simple Google Sites where um, I've had some ideas like a graph a day, uh, improving literacy, data literacy one day at a time. Students will then use graphs and each teacher can then use the, that for like a bell ringer type question um, just to have them practice because most of the ACT is graph reading type stuff. Um, so I'm going to continue to tie these in. Um, so we've talked a little bit about Plotly and something that I've started up this week is something called Project Quest. And I'm looking for passionate teachers that are willing to um, share their materials. Um, Quest stands for Quantitative Understanding for Educators, Students, and Technological Leaders. Um, so what happens is I'm going to get, we have several thousand teacher users, and I'm going to be compiling the lesson plans that they give me, 
tying them to the NGSS and Common Core state standards, and then putting it in a usable format. Um, usable format, I have one example one that comes off the modeling curr curriculum. And the internet's a little slow. Um, basically, I borrowed this framework from the Chris uh, Strategies book, mm -hmm. and then I kind of uh, went ahead and I made it very nice and friendly. Um, if there's certain things like, I thought this one, I linked a cool Quizlet little applet where you kind of match the polynomial to you know, inverse this one, and so forth. So I try to integrate all types of technology. I'm not limiting it to specifically Plotly. Um, I know a guy who has an entire physics curriculum written for smart boards. Uh, I'm going to talk to him tomorrow and see if he'd be okay with me posting it in our project quest. Um, so what we're looking at here is a really large scale collaboration. Um, take my card, uh, fill out the emails, um, the Google form that's going around, and I don't want to monopolize the entire meeting. Um, so I'm going to just kind of leave it at, I'd like to continue this conversation, but um, at the same time, I think that there's a lot of potential out there. Um, one last thing, the way that I ended up getting with these people is um, through Chromebooks. Uh, my district was a Chromebook school, and as you know, you can't install on Chromebook. So we were in a bind, and I was a physics teacher. I found this group, it was very new, they had just started. Um, and the way it works is you just go to the site and you can use their graphing tools. Um, no installation is required, so it's an excellent resource for Chromebook users. If you have the educational app, um, there's like an educational app suite, Plotly is also included in that. Um, but really, it's just a redirect. Most of you probably know how that works. Um, but basically, if you want, go into here and get the app. It's free. <laughs> and then you can just have it added to your thing that way. Um, but ultimately, it's just a redirect. <laughs> so. Um, I'm going to leave it at that, and I hope that we can continue this conversation a little bit more after the meeting, and possibly I could come out to your school. Um, I know I'm going to Physics Northwest tomorrow, and Saturday I think I was supposed to go to Ed Camp, but I don't know if I registered. <coughs> um, but uh, are there any questions about Plotly or what it is that I do? Thank you. All right, thank you. Thanks. All right, so many I'm already logged into everything I need on this one, so I'm going to switch. Um, I'm going to show you guys, um, you might have been hearing some beautiful little rumors, and how does this work? The one that goes to the board. Yeah. What? File from the board out. File from the board out. There we go. Okay. Um, you might have heard the rumors of Google Classroom. Okay, I don't know how many people have looked into it yet because it's so new. Um, I haven't had a lot of time with it, and one of my teachers said, oh, I'll look into it. I said, oh, great, have a good time. Um, and then all of a sudden, I was in the lounge, and I was hearing this, you gotta look at Google Classroom. You gotta look at Google Classroom. Now, you have to remember that we, I tried last year getting um, my teachers to use Doctopus. Hello, Marcy. Doctopus we tried using. They weren't fans. What? They weren't. <laughs> this has revolutionized the Doctopus land. Um, for those of you who didn't know Doctopus, it was a way to do, but very similar what Google Classroom does. Um, the one thing that Google Classroom does not do that Doctopus does do is that you can connect a rubric with Doctopus. Where Google Classroom, you can't. At least not yet. You never know what'll come down the line. 
in the Google world. Any in insight into that, Mr. Brutet? No. Okay. Just check on it. Uber kind of works with it. Uber does? Kind of. They're working on it. Okay. Okay, let's not look at that. So, hello? There you go. There you go. So what I did was I asked my, t my teacher for her login because I thought, to look at mine, I have no data. I have no kids because I don't have classroom. It's kind of stupid for you guys to look at that. So um, I'm in her account. She signed up for, she went to classroom.google.com, signed up. Very simple if, you're, if your school is a GAF school, which a lot of ours are. Um, I think majority of the schools, it's been rolled out now. I have not heard anything. Um, that they were holding back this summer. It was like all summer, all of us were waiting and waiting. Um, but I, I think everybody's rolled out now. Um, so you can get to it two different ways. You can go to classroom.google.com. And so this is the teacher view. These are her classes. How many students, upcoming assignments. You can also, and this is just to note what we learned, is the way to get to Google Classroom, if you don't want to type classroom.google.com, is under the array. I don't know if there's a true word for this little I call it thing. A waffle. What do you call it? A waffle. Oh, and we call it the array because the kids know arrays. So that's like a Brady Bunch. Like um, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I would <laughs> Below, and I. Oh, sorry. Below here, there's a more button, and there's Google Classroom. You can't see this, though, if you're in the google.com login. If I just go to google.com, it's not in that array. It's got to be through Drive. Tricks of the little trade that I found out. So you can get to the same place here. Now, why would you go here is to make your classes there are my classes, or add a class here. I'm not, uh, let's do this. Let's to add a class here, or to go into the class and create announcements or assignments. Hmm. So it's in the, a little announcement board that you could have running as well, um, or you can have the assignment. So we created an assignment. She connected a Google Doc. Each student will get a copy. She could add any comments. And then she also has a reading log that all trimester long they're going to be adding to. Um, it's fairly easy to add an assignment. You just type the assignment. I'll delete it later. Or she'll delete it. She knows I'm playing in here. You can add an attachment, something from your drive a YouTube video, or a link. So it doesn't have to necessarily be something that they do. You can put a link to something else. You know, you could put a link to Plotly. You could put a link to wherever else you want them to go. Um, and so I'll grab something out of her drive. Oh, she doesn't have it. Sure, Ricky took you back. Sure. And this section here, students can view, students can edit the file or make a copy for each student. So the days, I don't know about you, but before Doctopus, the days, the way we did it was we created a, a document, you said view only, you told the kids to go to the link, make a copy, they made a copy, but then they had to share it back with you that takes away all this. You don't have to do those, those steps. Because now I can say make a copy for each student. Now I'm not gonna do it on this one and I could assign it. So this is what she did with this one. She made, said make a copy. In her drive, you'll see classroom here. Those are her classes that you saw in Google Classroom. And these are her two assignments. It creates automatically a template of the assignment and it puts, 
She didn't make these folders. Google Classroom made these folders for her. And these are all the kids. She didn't make each individual. It oh, made it. Nice okay. And she can now go in and look at them. Standard. See if they've started them. The, so I can make suggestions. <laughs> I'm so excited, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I can, I'm, with I'm viewing it, read or print, final document, edits become I suggestions. Okay, I can't edit it because the kid still has, it needs to do it. Now what does it look like on the kid's side? They feel Let's share that. Sorry. Let's go oh, this, this is the kid's side. Now, as the kids, right now, I just have a language arts teacher using the Google Classroom. I'm hoping more teachers will have on. The kids go in here. Oh, they can start a tour. That's nice. They can look at their classmates if they want. Here's the homework. And it will populate, maybe. On this page, you can attach files to your assignment before you turn it in. So the student does it, and once they've turned it in, they're done. And it, what, if you did Doctopus, it embargoes it already. So then once the kid turns it in, they can't go back and edit until the teacher returns it. So um, those steps, Doctopus has a lot more steps. This is a, a much less if you ever use the two but this has been very simple I've, I have now teachers who are doing this going crazy with this um, Ryan said he has more than half your teachers now using it yep. so in, in conjunction with uh, Google uh -huh. Plus communities the combination of the two has just been stellar so but and we then, did nothing we just literally sent an email and saying here it is and over 300 teachers jumped out have gone with it without any PD but an email. And to look at your students, here are your students. You can also, if I go back to the assignment, here's the assignment, no grade, but this one has points because it was graded. I'm not sure how that worked because I don't know if they really did this, but it's, and then you can click it and return the grade to them. So they become the owners of the document again. And what's nice is that you can, at the end of the year, delete the folder and be done and get rid of everything all in one fell swoop. So it's easy to clean up your drive. Questions? And that was kind of Google Classroom in a nutshell, but very simple. Love you, Mars. Simpler than Dr. Cook. Hey, I'm thrilled too, but when I didn't have the classroom, <laughs> I still have a special place in my heart for Andrew Stillman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. One quick question. Have you found a way to do group work with this? That's the one thing, the limitation we're seeing right now is you can't get like three groups of, of three students to, on one document and have one of them be responsible to turn it in. I wonder if you, I haven't tried it, truthfully. You can put, but you can put more than one document on the same assignment, so you could, you'd have to tell the kids, okay, you're group A, so this is your document. Right. This is yours. Well, who turns it in? Then someone has to be responsible and be the owner. I mean, you can get collaborators, but it's it's like they each don't get it in their drive. You know what I'm saying? It comes up as shared with me. Well, you could choose, yeah, you don't have to make a copy for each student. You could have them all able to edit. We yeah, tried, we tried pushing on the document and saying that all, we put even, we made a class of just five kids and tried to do it that way and it didn't work. So we're trying to figure out a group way to do it, but it hasn't happened for us. Yeah. And there's no like group discussion component yet. Yeah. They said that that was one of the, in the their Google Plus Most community. Of they said that that's one of the, well, yeah, that's one of the things that we're looking at. Yeah, right. Thanks, Chris. Um, Jason is up, technically, but then I'm leaving, I'm up at the end. Okay, mine's fast. All right.
It's not octopus. <laughs> they had to move on. Okay. I had to let it go. It's okay. So actually, this is such a no big deal, but I love having it. It's called Apps Gone Free. Do you know about this? So if you don't have it on your iPhone or iPad, I think it's just worth the download because you can kind of see what's what's free every single day. It alerts you so you can check it daily. And especially if you're doing any volume purchases for your school, definitely it's worth stocking it. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Thank you to Deborah Heitner afterwards if you want something else to do at 7. Thank you for your space. Uh, mine's fast, but um, I saw this book here and reminded Oh, we have something about Apollo that uh, we all know what Neil Armstrong said on the moon, but what did Pete Conrad say when he came on the moon? He was the third man on the moon, so no one cares what the third man says. He's about my height, and he said, "It's a small. It was a small step for Neil, but it was a big step for me." <laughs> That's what he said. You can see it on YouTube. Okay, so um, as people know me. I have access to a lot of gadgets these days. I teach junior high technology, so we're. Uh, looking for uh, arts technology, so we're looking for creative ways to do things that would then later impact the teachers. So we test it with my students, and then when we take it on the road and help other teachers, that helps. So we saw this at a conference, Tech Forum, Tech yes, Forum, and uh, which is at uh, Marriott, mm -hmm. and I told them, my superintendent the next day we should get one, and then we, we did. So this, uh, the, what comes is just this white part. What is it? Oh, <laughs> this is called a swivel, which is spelled wrong. S W I V L, uh, and it's about three hundred dollars, maybe four hundred when I got the extra accessories and so on. So it's designed to put your iPad or iPhone on, and um, just opening up a camera app. It does come with its own uh, application, or well, maybe I'll put the other one. I'll do it this way. Um, so you just put that on there. You can hook in the microphone here. And it comes with a remote, which comes on this handy neck piece. So then you turn it on, and then it finds you. So if you wanted to record, a, I'm over here. If you wanted to uh, record a, a lecture, then and you walk relatively slowly, it follows. It works better on the iPad because you can see yourself a little bit better, but that, I just have to have this on me. And then what the beautiful thing is, the microphone's right here. Because that, it's kind of loud, actually, if you're up to it. And if you had the microphone on that, it, you would have, um, you'd hear that rumbling. So the microphone's right here, it goes Bluetooth into your device, and then it goes in. So it sounds, the audio is very clear. And so we're testing with our students who are in a broadcasting class. And then I know teachers, especially those who are working for national certification, need to do that video that is unedited. And so that's a, that's a big uh, trial for them. It doesn't go fast. So of course, my junior high kids are running around the room trying to out trick it, but it just doesn't do that. And then it's, it's almost super cool. It's just cool in that the remote charges inside here. But then you still have to deal with the necklace. The, the uh, jewelry. But if they could solve that, where it was all, all in one, that'd be great. So, so it saves the recording right to your... Oh, so you have a... De if you um, love Swivel, they have an app that has a storage that you pay for. You can get a little bit for free, but like an hour. And then you would have to... Uh, and it would stream it live. And if you were a college, a lot of colleges use it, he said, because they can record it all into one place. But for us, we would just use a movie app or record, you know, your photo app to um, to um, to just press record, and then you would edit out the beginning and the end. On the on here too, if you did use the app, there's an actual record, so you could tell it when to stop and start if you use the Swivel software, which I have not once to test it, and then I said I get it, it records to their cloud, and that's enough. And I, uh, I also bought um, the mount for a regular camera. Like it can hold a regular camera too, so that we'll, I'll know by the next meeting if it works. <laughs> Doesn't move in class. So this is again a uh, swivel, S-W-I-V-L. And, um, and if you go to their website right oh. now under the solutions, they have a free demo unit. They'll ship out the demo oh. unit for 60 days if you want to try it out. Oh. And then they have webinars that you can um, tune into the webinar. They show you how to use it. 
get your account signed up with us. So they're really pushing the education market. I was just Could ahead of the curve. S W I V L. Just if you go to S. So no E then. Correct. No e then. And then if there's a movie right there. It does tilt up and down too a little bit. Yeah, question. Yeah, I'm sorry. Could you explain again how you um, stored it? If you don't use the app, you send it to the Well, on your device, you would just use your movie, you recording, use device your movie recording device uh -huh. and then sync it to your computer later. Or not, if you just keep it so all on your device. There's an app called YouTube Capture, oh. um, it'll go right into YouTube automatically. It'll record directly to YouTube. It's hmm. an app called Capture. It takes a village to present a, 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 a bad remote. No, it's, I, I look so much smarter standing next to Charlotte. Yeah, it's yeah, I mean, you, it's wherever the it's wherever the remote it's wherever the remote is. It doesn't have to be on your neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. You can't show it to anyone. It would be just for kids. Right. Or for the yeah. or, or for an Or evaluating the behavior or something like that. Oh, yes, yeah, because the kid doesn't so, know that it's. That, well, they well, they know because they're, they're wearing it. The other right. kids would have to have a big tripod. Not everyone has to yeah. know what's so happening. So, again, the tripod. But at least it's not a person who's standing there. Yeah, at least there's not a person watching. So, so tell your the baby sitter to wear it. Oh, this is what it is. So tell your this is what no comes in the box. <laughs> Nanny cam Plus some different stream. slide width sliders to hold <laughs> different devices. And that's it. I just brought a tripod from school. So you don't have to have a tripod? You do not. It can sit on a table. You know where it won't work? Space would just float around. <laughs> so if I can tie that back in again. But it doesn't just go for us. It goes up and down a few degrees. I, I wouldn't count on that. It seems best when it's up. When it has about the right one. one. Hey, Jay, did it work? Yes, the Android didn't work. Yeah. Oh, great. Yes. They have their own app? Go to parents. Thank you. Have you used it at your school? PTO grant. You can do a PTO grant. I mean, I just press the board. It's sort of it's device neutral. Yes. It's device neutral. I'm in the all right, Jennifer, you are up. Oh, yeah, but now I got the socks in my eyes. Okay, so um, there's a lot of things. I am getting my master's, and I am working on standards based learning, and then one of the few um, here at Shepherd, uh, the elementary school already started that, and we are on um, progress to kind of tootle around with it this year to put it into action next year. So um, I decided I was going to start now. And my assistant superintendent is Dr. Zoltan. I think it was through Twitter, the Twitter vine, um, I learned about rubrics. So if you are using a standards-based learning sort of rubric, it's easiest to start from the learn more part. Um, they call this the wrong way to grade a rubric. If you have level four is like meet standards, or they call it exceptional, level three effective, level two acceptable, level one developing, and you know this is where a student places, just taking the total points, dividing it by 16 will give this person an F. To me, that's really low. And that's not deserving because they were effective in two out of the four uh, like criteria. Mm -hmm. So what they say to do is um, use their algorithm in, in this program, and it's all online, super free, um, really straightforward and easy. As opposed to taking nine divided by 16, they do some sort of mathematical conversion, and this person would then earn a 77%, which to me seems more fair. If your level four is like the A, level three is the B, level two is the D, or C, I'm sorry, and level one's the D, there really isn't anything below that um, that would kind of maybe help putting letters to this grade. So, going back to the main page, rubrics.com, R-O-O-B-R-I-X, um, if you have four levels of proficiency, meet standards, approaches, I do approaches with assistance and then, um, you know, still developing or something, and you have a couple different criteria, say you're grading on, I'm a Spanish teacher, so vocab, uh, grammar, and compre comprehensibility, so three criteria. So if a student gets a total of 10 points on that rubric, and the, to, the minimum to pass would be a 60, so a low D, it changes it into a 
a 10 divided by 12 wouldn't be the same necessarily. So it's pretty cool um, to help more accurately grade um, on a rubric. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Well, thank you. Hey, has anybody heard of Kahoot it yet? Yes! yes. Okay, so it's not new for some of you. What? <laughs> but if you have a device. Hold on. Charlene? Yes? You've been asked to speak louder. Louder. Hang on, let me log in first. So if you have uh, something to get online with right now, go to kahoot.it, K-A-H-O-O-T dot I-T. Is this the competitive one points? Oh, it's, yeah, you, oh, we're going to do it? Yeah, we're going to do one. This is so, so everybody should go to it. Everyone should go to it. Do you want to see? I'm going to open his up. It's in a while to load. I saw this this summer at ISTE. We were in some session and we actually got to play it. And I thought this is so fun and competitive. The idea is that you can create quizzes or um, check for understanding kind of knowledge type things. And it's competitive in that you can put people in groups. You're going to see a question with four answers. The answers are colored. You're going to see like red, real bright colors, red, green, blue. And you have to tap on the right answer, click on the right answer. And the quicker that you click on the answer, the more points you get. K-A-H. K-A-H. O-O-T dot I-T. So that's how you would get your students into it. Down at the bottom, it says make your own at getkahoot.com. You see that? So I'm going to log into my Kahoot it. You can sign in. It's free. It says it only takes 30 seconds to sign up. And what's nice is that there are like 360,000 cahoots out there already. So even if you don't want to create your own, you can search by different topics, by different ideas, and you can just you know start a game in your class about something. So I'll sign in with. You have to be signed in to play. No. You don't need to be signed into play, but you have to be signed into run it. So I need to run it and start you guys off. No. You're too eager. I don't like this. <laughs> You're too competitive for me. Okay. <laughs> She's already wants to play. <laughs> uh, I'm busy trying to put the notes that I have for us. So sure I have <laughs> We're going to play this game. That's called Iconic Products, okay? And so when I launch it, how do we? Personal I'm going to give you a pin number oh. to get there. Writing student. Oh, game pin. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to get you but a game pin. Delete my so your game pin. So ready to join? Get out your phone or tablet now. I'll do the announcing with this microphone while you work the radio. Six five one six two. <laughs> Now, shrunken heads for all occasions. Write like them, swap them, give them to your witch doctor friends. You can always cook up more with Pressman's witch doctor and his shrinking You can get Mattel's blade wherever toys are sold. Kids, this is a toy you've got to have. Okay, is everybody on the number 65152? 12.98 is your favorite toy store. I'm watching you. All right, so it says I can So one of the things you can do when you start your game out, you can embed a YouTube video to play while people are joining. So I just put an iconic like toys. So make this toy. 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 Make this Thank you. 
Are we logged in as a person right now? Can yeah. I sign in the Chrome? Yes, that's where I am. Yeah, then there's a sound. Well, if I, if I, I want to show my extension. No, I'm with Kevin. You know, fourth. so let me, let me try and I'll just oh, make yeah. I'm with Steve. Yeah, Steve. Steve. I'm with Steve Fourth, but I can just own it with my own dad. This is fun, right? And they I do a lot of games. Oh, I have but some games I can share with you that are very All right, I'm going to give it a second, um, but I'll give you a little bit of background for those of you who don't know about Notable PDF. All my extensions are going to start loading here. So um, I am the instructional technology coach, uh, coach at Evanston Township High School. And I've been working with teachers who are using Chromebooks in their classrooms. And one of the things that um, I get asked is, how do I have my students annotate PDF, right? We know how to annotate um, documents and, and work with that. Um, so I've been looking at different options, and there's a lot out there in the Chrome store, but this is the one that I've been working with some teachers using in the classroom. Um, this week I set it up in a few different classrooms with students, had them install it, and we've been learning as we go on how this works, and the kids have, have really embraced it. So um, I also wanted to start talking, maybe I was thinking about doing Digo too, but that's maybe for another day. Um, because Notable has a, p a free version that's always free. So I figured that's probably the one we should stick to. Here, they're all, here they all come. Okay. All right, so Notable is here now. I'm going to find myself a PDF. Let's see, uh, file type. Is it file type? File type dot PDF. All right. <laughs> PDF entry. Okay. <laughs> Turn a word document to PDF. Um, all right, so I have a lot of things going here, but what you can see it for notable PDF is this round red sign with some, looks like a red wheel. Uh, that's in my extension up here. It is both an extension and an app. Um, I'm using it as the extension. The app is really just like a link, right, to the actual page. So if you go to the Chrome Web Store, you can install it as the extension. And when I click on it, it's probably going to make me sign in with Google, which I like because all the students have the accounts already at Google App School. Uh, it's pretty easy for them to get connected to it. And the free version just allows you to open from Drive. Uh, you can also drag and drop a file here. The free version won't let you save in Drive again afterward, but it does let you re kind of reopen and, and that information later. So let's see if I can drag this one. I, I don't think I can drag it just. I'm just going to quickly say it. Most kids would have it in their drives already, right? So, okay. So I pulled it up into the viewer. Um, I have mine set on my computers where it automatically opens any PDF in Notable. You can turn that on or off, it's up to you. Uh, you can also, from your drive, open it straight into Notable. But what you see on the side here are some different options. So the, depending on the type of PDF, most of them you actually recognize the text. Some are so image-based that they don't recognize there's text at all. This highlighting feature is not great with that type of PDF, but most PDFs that I've found um, actually do recognize the text. So you can take the highlighter feature here and choose your color. So you know, I work with students on color coding for a theme or for a character, different types of things they might want to um, highlight, and it'll actually highlight it in that color for them. So they can go through and, and use regular annotation like they would with highlighting, which I think is great because I know I lose track when I'm reading a PDF sometimes. Uh, you can also do strike through, that's what this one is, underline. Uh, again, the top three only work well if, it's, if it recognizes that there's text there. Uh, but the, the bottom, these bottom two, the comment box, no matter what type of PDF you have, it will work, so you can put in um, a comment and put a little dot on the page and put my name. Okay, so I can put a note here, like pick up here later, right here later, right, and I can come back and I can see that's where I left off. Right. Um, you can collaborate in Notable as well, so you can have more than one person using it, which is awesome. I did set it up with some students where they all had the same copy in their Google Drive, where they shared with each other, and then when they opened it, they could all see each other's notes on it. Okay, so right now it's just me, but if there were more people in here, you'd see the little round, like I'm around the uh, MM. We'd have more down here in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, one confusing part that took me a while to figure out is that you actually, in this top right-hand area, can switch between different copies. So if you are, say, reading this on your own, but also reading it with a group, you might have different versions here. It takes a while to learn how to navigate that. 
Um, and we as a class, the students, you know, figured that all out really quickly. When there were 209 annotations, we were like, wait, who's doing what? It was kind of confusing. But you can track back and forth if you wanted to keep one that was just your own, or you could keep one that's with your, your colleagues. Um, you can decide whether or not you're going to share your annotations as well. So this little share button allows you to do that. And then you can share them out um, through, I think you just have to upload to Notable and you get a link. So you can give them links as well. So teachers who, if teachers really want to, you know, say, say to a kid like, I don't understand, you know, why maybe we're struggling with this. Let me see your annotations. They can actually send that to their teacher and the teacher could look at those annotations or it could be shared on the document with them. Um, so it's a pretty cool, pretty cool tool that I think teachers have enjoyed. It's solving some of the PDF problems that we've run into and I would recommend giving it a shot and playing with a little bit on your own as well. Um, any questions about Notable PDF? I'm not an expert, but play with it a little bit. Okay, cool, so well, that's it. Let me just connect to this. Are you? Which one are you? Just press the What from the yeah. 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 I'm not supposed to call it. I have a trio of three quick apps one for students, one for staff, and one just for Fridays. <laughs> um, some are free, some are not. I'll, I'll know which one is which. My name's Beth, by the way. I'm at 112, which is Highland Park. There we go. Okay. Um, so the one for students, um, Linda, you, you showed um, Fitzboard last year, which I loved because it's so super flexible because you can do a million things with it. Well, I found another one in that same track, which is called Stick Around, which if anybody has used, um, actually, to go back to this folder for a second. Oh, no, I put it in a different folder. If anyone has used Show Me, where you can make little annotated movies and you can share them, you can look at everyone else's, this is almost like the same thing except... It's like old school um, stick em boards. You have projects or puzzles. Puzz puzzles are the finished product that you want to put in front of the kids. Projects are things you're working on. Just like Show Me and um, Bitsboard, there's tons of stuff you can go shopping amongst other people's creations. But basically, like if I did um, this decimal one here and start it, it's a sticker board where you can drag things on. I'm totally not paying attention. Please don't assume I'm this bad at math and you check it and it will tell you how many you got right but won't necessarily so tell cool. you where the wrong answers go fun. you still have to figure it out which i love this is called stick around um it is 2.99 so this is my one that costs money but i love that you can go shopping for things this company also owns another app called X me if you go look at uh, the company on, online you can check it out but they have the ability that they sort they pretty much exactly cloned what um, is it per kid or is it a teacher and then it's a teacher and it like this is definitely the thing that I would sort of put it on my teacher iPad or I would put it on one and I would hand it to them yeah because there doesn't seem to be an account set up where you could sort of log in um, so this is definitely sort of a local thing, but again, I liked it because it was super flexible. You could have it fit for any grade, any skill level. Um, so it might just be a nice little, uh, for those kids who really like something interactive, and of course, you can um, you can make your own if you're in projects here. You can uh, create your new projects. They have a lot of templates here where sort of the boxes are just mapped out for you. You design the stickers, you design the background. I found the interface really, really easy and pleasant to use for designing. Um, so that's just something if you wanted a, a different, very flexible thing to do. Um, for staff, this is free. Uh, this app has changed my life. Yeah, it's coming. Um, which is called Wonderlist, if anyone uses that. It's spelled with a U, like Wunderbar, W-U. Um, it's down here in my toolbar, because in my lock bar, because I use it so much. This is my actual Wonderlist for real. 
Um, this is actually my shopping list for real. <laughs> um, you can share this. Uh, this you do create an account. It's free. There is a pro version. I've never used it. I've never found the need to. Um, you can share various lists with other people when they log into Wonderlist. What will show up that I've shared. So my husband, if we share this grocery and shopping list, and so, so he will, if he knows I'm stopping at the grocery store on the way home, he will put stuff up here. And you can set various notifications that you want it to, you know, push you an email or a text notification or whatever. Yes. So I know to get orange juice on my way home. <laughs> it's drink. <laughs> um, so he actually added he added OJ earlier today. Um, you can also set that different people need to complete this. You can set a date. You can set them to be reoccurring. I mean, the list of features just went on and on and on and on and on. So this is my brain. No, this is literally my brain. And what's even better is that it has a Mac app that you can download to your desktop, a PC app, an Android app. I mean, they have this for every platform you could possibly think of. Except I'm honestly not sure if they have an online portal for those of you on Chromebook. They do. Yeah. They do. Okay, fabulous. <laughs> um, so that I just found. I mean, I yeah, love to do lists. I love the the satisfaction of crossing it off, which so they do give you. So if I showed my completed items, like you can actually huge. You cross can it off. Class. It's very satisfying. <laughs> um, so that's wonderless. And the last one, just for fun, of course, right before I came, um, I was having printer failure because they knew I was in a hurry and they can smell your fear. And I wanted to actually print out um, something to go with this. So I had a fellow teacher show me this. It's called Color. So it's like color, except spelled with an A-R at the end. This is for pure fun. But you all love this, too. You won't want to admit it, but you will. It's, um, it's coloring pages. OK, cool. So you actually print out the physical coloring sheets from online. You go to colar.com. Um, you have to use their coloring sheets for this to do its magic. But you would sit there and you would just color them with markers or crayons or whatever you want. OK, cool. But what's really, really neat is that this has a whole 3D rendering uh, graphics ability to it. And if you are coloring their special coloring pages, which look like that, when you're done, you press the big play button and you would take, like, so there's the water bottle. You would, um, oh, oh, look, thanks. Let's see if it might, should. So, Oh. Okay, as soon as it comes back. I just want, I just want. Wait for it. It's worth the wait. It is worth the wait. Did anybody do international job day for Peter and Yes, because they have a free one for that. That's where they were going to show me. So unplug it, plug it back in. Yeah, they have an, a, a page, a coloring page for that day. Right now, it's gonna come up. Hold on. There we okay. go. Oh, that's so good. this is this is that coloring page. It was a PDF, and I opened it up in Notability, and I colored it. So it's, she's actually doing it off the iPad. So rather than paper, um, but whatever you do, do with the color, it, it does this augmented reality. And I think uh -huh. you can touch on different things, and they do. It, they can, yeah. Um, so all the pages, not only will it take the color that you've drawn in, but it will also animate them. So like they have one of a dinosaur and the di I'm not kidding, like the dinosaur walks around and there's a okay. volcano erupting in the background and literally the wow factor on this from kids, they, are, they literally are like, whoa! <laughs> so I've had middle schoolers who are like, what's color? <laughs> so you you do have to use their pages, yeah, because they, um, they've they programmed in the, this 3D rendering. Um, they also have a very clear border around the whole thing, which helps it find the image and grab it so it knows what to render. And of course, this, okay, here, we'll try to do one more. Okay. Oh, so cool. I know, right? <laughs> So it's like just so pretty. That is so cool, we're, right? He's chilling out and eating the worms. Like you know? <laughs> so obviously, it, 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 it will fetch whatever that colors so you colored it. <laughs> and, and, and including, so as long as I keep it in my view, I'm sorry, I'm going to stand in front of it. You know, you know, it, it will it will be at whatever angle I'm at. 
That's really I know, isn't that so super cool? And some of them, when you touch them, they will do interesting things. Like, there's one with a present. When you touch the present, the present opens and confetti comes out. So things like that. Oh, yeah, the plane does flips, yeah. <laughs> so that's Col R, Color. Uh, your wonder list? Cool. Yes. So I saw at one of, I think, our ed camps or something using wonder list. You can go across the top. So I use this for um, tracking where students are in a long-term project. So I have like step one, step two, step three. And as opposed to your grocery shopping list, which I totally love and will probably do, um, <laughs> you put the student names, you show it up on your Promethean Bird or Smart Board, and then when the kid moves from step one to step two or two to three, they take their name and drag it to the next step across on the list, and you can track where kids are at all times. And if they say they're done, you go over to them and say, okay, let's see, step one, two, and three, and you can kind of hold them accountable. Oh, I love so that. So it's really cool. I always want to hold them accountable. <laughs> hey, last but not least, Maria. Oh, okay. I'm getting tired. My eyes are. Hi guys, I'm Maria Galanis. I'm the instructional coach at Shepherd. Um, I'm going to show you guys something that's kind of low tech for high tech. Um, so it's, you guys, um, do you know Jenny Magira? Mm -hmm. I follow her and a couple weeks ago she posted how to make a homemade stylus for your iPad. Um, and I thought it would be kind of fun, maybe even if you had like some, like a little science project or something in your class, to do this. Um, so let me just pull it up. You basically need just three things. You need a Q-tip, some aluminum foil, and a little cup of water. Um, <laughs> So this is it. You basically just take the Q-tip, wrap tin foil around the Q-tip, um, making sure that part of it is touching the cotton part, and then you just dip it in a little water, and you can use it as a stylus for your iPad. Whoa! Just thought it was a fun little because <laughs> you know, especially if you have a classroom full of iPads and the kids really want something to write with, a stylus can get kind of. So yeah. this was a fun thing to try. That's cool. That's it. That's cool. <laughs> All right, thanks. Bonus round. Sorry, does it work? Ignore my little. I want to share one thing that a teacher shared with me this summer, and I thought it was pretty interesting. I don't know how many of you use primary documents, or obviously we know teachers who do use primary documents. It's called Docs teach.org if you haven't seen it yet I thought this was just read about this yeah, yeah it's pretty new it's fairly new um, and obviously Constitution Day is coming up though we teach the Constitution in spring so I was like oh this won't help but you can find their activities that they've already created find and use activities crafted by educators using documents from the National Archives and or you can create your own so what it is if i look at the revolution and the new nation okay this is hard to read sorry um you can quickly look and i'll look at this one so it says in this activity students will review and analyze the founding documents of the united states understand benjamin franklin's contributions it explains everything okay now I find sometimes when I've looked at these activities, I'm like, my middle schoolers are never going to be able to do this. I think a lot of these are written at high school level. Mm -hmm. But you, that doesn't mean to say you can't do your own. So if I start the activity, OK, learn more, use a representative. Now I need to match two squares. So. Oh, cool. Not that I'm going to do this, but let's try again. <laughs> I can, I've tried this. I'm just terrible at it. So do they, do they have a research by grade level, or is it just by topic? Um, Let me back out. And when I opened it, it went to Constitution. Is that what it's? The Constitution is their front page because it's the because this week is oh. the. Um, I have not been able to search. You can search by historical era, 
by thinking skill or by the tool. Okay. And the tools are finding a sequence, focusing on details, interpreting data, things that the Common Core wants us to do with, if you haven't read the new social studies standards, the CCS, CCCS, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know, there's so many C's in there. Um, but all of these are in those new standards. If you ever looked at the new social studies standards, they don't have, you need to teach US history anymore. It's, you need to understand, I mean, it's very broad, um, the new standards. So this really helps. Now you can also create your own. So create your own learning activity, finding a sequence, which is, I was doing a matching, seeing the big picture. You can do weighing the evidence. Um, and one of my teach, and then you log in. I have, a, well, I have a social studies teacher working on this now. But I just thought that it was an interesting idea uh, to pull in primary documents and get the kids to be looking at those primary documents. That is part of the Common Core. All right. Thank you. Big round of applause to all of our presenters. All right, we will pull up right now for the CPDU so you can get that information in place. But just a quick final reminder um, our next meeting is October 22nd at Main South. It is all about the Google ecosystem, K 12, not just Chromebooks, the entire Google ecosystem. So if that intrigues you, we hope to see you there October 22nd at Main South mm -hmm. High School. What's that? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm on the ball with that. All right. <laughs> I know those were. I'm used to talking to another people. We have to get some things, some donations. I don't have time now. I have a job gets in the way of things. <laughs> Are we supposed to log? Are we going to log on to this? There you go.